This is Rob Tebbett for Boxing Social. Delighted to be joined on the phone by Shelley Finkel. How are you, Shelley? I am good, and yourself? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Um, thanks very much for taking my call. It's been a while. I think the last time we spoke would have been in the immediate mm. aftermath of December the 1st. What have you been up to? Oh, God. It's easier to tell you what I haven't been up to. <laughs> um, just um, in general, busy, all good. Um, finding um, and doing a replacement for the fight with um, Deontay and Fury, since that's not happening um, as the next fight. And... Um, that's pretty much that story. Let's just go straight into that. Um, I was surprised that the fight wasn't going to happen, but one thing that I did immediately recall was in the immediate aftermath of December the 1st, with the draw with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, you were one of few people who didn't seem 100% sure that the fight would indeed happen next, the rematch. Is that fair to say? Um, well, I was leaning toward it, but um, it was a rough fight for him, um, Fury, no matter what he says. Um, you know, he showed a lot of guts getting up from a devastating knockdown in that 12th round. And um, any way you look at it, it was a very big knockdown. So I don't know how um, that has played over in his mind since then. And then with the top rank offer, and he has an opportunity to get a payday before going back in with um, Deontay, um, he may be taking the safer route. When did you, how soon after did negotiations start for the rematch? Was it, was it very early on in the new year? Was it, did you wait until after Christmas before? It, it was in December. We, um, you know, were saying, because look, the sooner we know if we are or are not going forward, the sooner or later we can start doing something else. When did you first begin to think that the, the Fury rematch may not be the route that, that Deontay and Tyson were going to go down? When did you first start to have doubts? Um, a couple of weeks ago when things weren't getting finished as quick as I had hoped. Um, usually in life, when something doesn't happen as it's supposed to, there's a reason, whatever that reason is. And um, in this case, it was him negotiating or making a deal with top rank. Did you have any inclination that that was going on during your negotiations? Did you have any clue? None at all. How did that make you feel? Surprised. You just care to elaborate on uh, that? Not really, because if you're in the sport long enough, you learn to deal with surprises. I would rather have good news or bad news than up and down. That's my nature. I'm pretty even keel. And at some point in your life, you just say, hey, you got to learn to deal with what these things are because this is what it is. You don't have control over it. You can't change um, that. This is, you know, out of your control. If someone else making a decision, this is what they're going to do. It's like, um, in, you know, when you're young and you can't get a girlfriend on the phone, you say, oh, I wonder if she got my call. I wonder if she got, of course she did. She wasn't talking to you because she's doing something else. And that's a very similar um, situation. They um, decided to go another route, and for a little while they disappeared. And um, that gives you the first inkling of it. And um, I'm not angry at him for it. I'm disappointed. Hopefully the next fight will be with him, which is what the indication seems to be. And we would welcome that. So we're going to go and do a fight of our own. And on May 18th, the opponent can fight to be decided very soon. And then we'll go from there. We'll come on to Deontay's opponent on May 18 um, shortly, but just touch on, I mean, the, the first fight or the only fight to date between Deontay and Tyson was famously very easy to negotiate, or certainly that was the, that was the perception 
due to the fact that the, the Joshua Wilder negotiations had dragged on seemingly forever. And then the Wilder Fury fight kind of came out of the blue and was made very, very quickly. What changed in 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 terms of the rematch? Did Tyson's perceive... Well, let's go back to that first. Sure. The difference in negotiating or doing something is, do you want to make it or do you want to be, oh, I'm not giving you more than this, I'm not doing this, and not make it. Um, the Fury side, the first one, we believe we overpaid. But we wanted to fight. And it was the right career move for both fighters. And it elevated both of them to a level on a par with um, Joshua now. So it was the right move. And if I were Joshua's people, instead of saying, I'll give you this, and I told this daddy, so I'm not saying something to you out of school. I said, forget this. It's no longer the Eddie Joshua show. If you want to make a deal, you sit down and you make a deal. The split, the percentage, everything you get done. And then... You work together like we did with Fury to make it the biggest fight possible. That's what this is about. If you want to stand on a high horse and say, well, I'll give you this, you're not making a fight with us. We have enough other options. We'd prefer to fight you, but we won't. We're not going to listen to your dictates. And, um, you know, in theory, he says yes, and then he does his grandstanding. Oh, I just made an offer to them. We didn't ask you for an offer. We have no interest in your offer. We read it. It's not worth a reply. So that's, you know, that. Then on this, um, we thought until the top rank offer came on the scene that we ha were making progress to make a deal with um, Fury, and then it turned um, another way. I don't believe that Top Rank made that deal solely on the power of Fury. They did it so that they could have a Wilder on their side, which is not happening either. Wilder is not for sale. If there's a fight he wants or needs, Maybe on a one-off we'll do a promotion, but we're not going to give a multi-fight deal to someone when we work 10 years to, as a team, bring Deontay to where he is. Now, that's something that I was going to come on to later, but as you've spoken about it now, let's touch upon that now. So Deontay is free on, take it as you say, a fight-by-fight -fight basis. If a deal were to come up, for example, for Deontay to fight on ESPN or even Anthony Joshua on the zone, you would you would not be averse to certainly looking at that offer and seeing if that offer makes sense for him on a fight by fight. Sure. We would listen to anything. We have loyalty to the people who got us there. We don't have a contractual commitment. We have a moral commitment to do the right thing by the partners that have been with us. Conversely, um, it's just interesting. I'll just clarify that for anybody who's who's listening. So, what you're saying is there there is no contractual agreement, but there is a, a moral agreement, as you said, with with Deontay and Showtime. Um, converse, conversely, would you? Eddie Hearn told me that Anthony Joshua would be free to fight on another network, as he is not tied to the zone. Could you see that scenario happening, where potentially Anthony Joshua could fight on Showtime? Um. Well. I believe the fight will be a pay-per-view fight. And the incorrect assumption is that there is a Showtime network. It's a Showtime branded. It yeah. could be, you know, it could be your name as the, um, you know, the Tepa network. It could be anyone. It's just that in order to maximize the revenue, you go with a, 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 a group that can sell the most number of buys at the right price. So that's one. Two, at this point, 
I'm unaware because all the authors that I've heard are with the zone. So that I do not believe is, um, you know, he may say it, but I don't believe it's that simple. This is something that uh, the first time we sat down and spoke in Belfast that we spoke about this. Um, how big of an obstacle do you see the zone being in? I mean, we're going a little bit off track here. Um, being in making a potential Joshua Wilder fight, do you see the zone as being the ultimate sticking point in that negotiation? No, I see the ultimate um, problem being Eddie and Joshua's attitude. That's okay with a Dylan White. That's not okay with a Deontay Wilder. I'm not paying you this. So instead, they'll fight Gerald Miller in the U.S. And, you know, most people think, oh, that's nice. He's coming here. It's not like, wow. And everything that Joshua does should be a wow after the fights he had, um, you know, with Klitschko and stuff. And they're not. And what he's doing is, to me, ruining the brand. Just final question on Tyson Fury's deal sure. with, with ESPN. Um, if you were negotiating a fight now with Tyson Fury, who do you call? Do you call Bob Arum or do you call Frank Warren? Um, I'm not sure. I've been dealing with Frank, so that's who I continue. If he said that Bob has to be part of it, that's fine. I don't have, you know, a big animosity with Bob. Um, Bob is, is is somebody who's not is not hidden the fact that he's not a fan, should we say, of Al Heyman. Does that throw up potential obstacles for making a, a Wilder Fury too? Um, not if he um, wants to make the fight. Look, I deal with a lot of people that I would not invite into my home. But I have an obligation to my fighter. And that obligation is to do the best thing for him. And if that means speaking with people that I wouldn't normally, then I do it. Where does this leave Deontay, Shelley? What, 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 how is his mental state here? This is, this is now the best part of 18 months where the vast majority of the conversation has been about negotiations rather than the fight. How did he feel when the Fury fight was, was ultimately sidelined? Well... Let's go back. That's not totally correct. There's been a lot of talk and negotiation, and in its perverse way, it's made him bigger. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. And, and then there was the big Fury fight, which for a while, our good friend Eddie says, never going to happen. Never is a long time. And they're just doing it to make Joshua upset. Proved we weren't. Ah, it's going to be terrible. It wasn't terrible. And then we moved on to the rematch. And when it was ready for the rematch, I prepared Deontay, because we speak every day about everything, whether it be good news or bad. Otherwise, I don't feel I'm doing the right job. And especially in this um, day of social media, anyone can post anything they want. And I always want to be prepared, and I always want Deontay to be prepared for whatever comes. And so I said, look, we're being avoided for a while, and usually when someone avoids you, there's a reason. So, you know, disappointed a bit, shocked, no. And... Um, we move on. What are you going to do? We're big boys. It's not what we wanted, but not the end of the world. It seems to me, Shelley, that the heavyweight division was kind of getting itself to a point where these fights were realistic. Um, do you do you think with Fury signing with ESPN, with Joshua obviously still on the zone, has this? I mean, it sounds like a silly question, but I'll ask it anyway. Has this just muddied the waters and made things a lot more difficult? It, not a lot. Not a lot. We could fight um, him if we decided to on ESPN. We could fight um, Joshua if it, we decided. In the offer by um, top rank to us, there was going to be a fight before Fury fought us next anyway. So 
in either case, if we made a deal with them or we don't, we were fighting before we fought the um, Fury next. So that doesn't change anything. And um, depending on the next fight, Deontay will have two or three fights this year. Hopefully there'll be good, exciting fights with the right result from my side. And um, that's all you could hope for. I appreciate that you're yet to make an announcement, but I do have to ask anyway. Where do we stand with an opponent for May 18th? Um, We've obviously seen White and Brazil being ordered for the interim title when the rematch between Tyson and Deontay was about to take place. Now that's not happening. Has there been any suggestion that either one of those will will move up and and take the shot against Deontay? I know a lot of people are considering Dominic Brazil to be the front runner. I've also seen Luis Ortiz as a potential option for a rematch. What can you tell me about that? I can't. Um, that will announce in the next couple of days, um, and that's when we have all our ducks in a row. The public will know. Okay, no, I appreciate it. I, that's the answer I knew you would give me anyway, but I did have to ask it. Um, of course. Uh, um, no problem. When was the last time there was a negotiation for the Anthony Joshua fight? Um, you've, you've said Eddie has sent you offers that you didn't deem worthy of your response. When was the last time that you, you did engage in a conversation or a negotiation about the fight? The week of December 15th. Was that an abrupt conversation? Was it anything, anything tangible? Obviously not too tangible because the fight hasn't been made, but from your point of view... The key word was too tangible. Um, he, thought, he said things that sounded right, and then when he didn't answer my call or return it, I knew there was nothing for him and I to talk about anymore. Eddie said that you've been ignoring his emails um, that you won't discuss about. Is that accurate? Well, it's partially true. Actually, 100% true. But he forgets to mention that we spoke on the 11th or 12th, and he said, send me a time we should talk. I sent him an email saying, how about 3 o'clock Friday the 14th? Never answered, never called. At 10 o'clock that night, I come home, and on my home machine, there was a message he called at 3. So I called him back. I said, Eddie, if you wanted to reach me, you never emailed me, you never called me at my office, you never called me at my mobile, all numbers you have. He said, look, I'm in a restaurant now, can we talk tomorrow? I said, when? He said, 10 a.m., I called him at 10 a.m. He didn't answer, did not return my calls. Joshua that day says, what do they want? I'm offering them this. I'm going to give them April 13th at 1. And I said, don't give me anything. I didn't ask you for it. How do you know I want to fight or my fighter wants to fight April 13th? You don't even talk to us. You just tell us what you're going to do. And at that point, I shut down everything with Eddie because I had no confidence in anything he says. How does negotiations or the lack of negotiations with Eddie Hearn compare to other big fights that you've made? I mean, this is something that we've spoken about. You've made some of the biggest fights or you've certainly been involved in some of the biggest fights in recent times. How is this different? What, what is so different about these negotiations compared to other fights you've been involved in in the past? Not so different, except Eddie Hearn is the person. There's other people who have been hard to get something done, but they get done when they're ready. And eventually, hopefully, um, Joshua says to Eddie, get me that fight. Look, Jim Jacobs could not deal with Butch Lewis. Eventually, Tyson said, I want to fight Michael Spinks. And Jim said, Shelly, you're friends with Butch. Go make the fight and we'll do this. And I did. And there'll come a time when Joshua has no viable alternatives and Eddie and him are going to say, let's make the right deal. I'm not looking to bat him over the head. I just want what I feel is right for my fighter. Do you think Anthony Joshua wants to fight Deontay Wilder? I hope the heavyweight champion always wants to fight an opponent. That's not what I asked, Shelley, with respect. Well, I can't tell you what's in his mind. I'm telling you what I think. What do you think Eddie should be doing more or could be doing more to make this fight? Is it just keeping that a more 
I don't know, being more receptive to yours and Deontay's wishes in the fight? Would you do you think that is kind of what's missing at the minute? Of course. When he wanted to fight for the I think it was the IBF title that Charles Martin had, he went and made the fight. What about yourself, Shelley? I mean, do you, do you feel like there's anything else that you could have done or could be doing to make the fight, or is it something that you're you're kind of secure in what you and Deontay have done to this point? Oh, we're very secure. We were willing to take a flat. We were willing to do whatever he wanted to do it. Um, I am very confident we did whatever was necessary without totally emasculating ourselves. We only pulled the pants down halfway. <laughs> um, I was waiting for you to laugh. I thought I threw some good lines at you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Shelley, you're, you're you're forgetting the time difference here. It's almost ten o'clock at night, and I'm. I'm... Excuses, excuses. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, where am I? Uh, how how much has the goalpost shifted? I mean, that's a pretty a pretty English term. Um, how much how much has it changed? December the first has that. Do you feel? I mean, obviously, it's obvious it changed a lot, mm. and it also changed that in the heavyweight division, there's only a few people who are really up the top, and you have to make those fights when you can. What did you make of Eddie Hearn and Steven Espinosa's recent spat? Immature, you know, just silly. Good for business, bad for business, irrelevant for business? Yeah, it keeps the name in the public eye. Otherwise, what does it do? How is your relationship with Stephen? Oh, excellent. Good. Well, Shelley, I think we're about there. Um, thank you very much. Only because you, it's getting to be 10.05 or so there. It's 10.05 and my 18-month-old daughter is actually in bed. So I'm... Ah, I'm, I'm sure it should have been earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you you set the time, not me. Um, Shelley Finkel, as always, it's a pleasure speaking to you. I do hope to see you again soon. I was hoping you were going to be over for DeGale Eubank Jr., but obviously with recent events, that wasn't possible. But um, I do hope to see you soon, whether it is here or in America. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social, and I look forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you, and you have a nice evening.